Tonight, origami expert Robert Lang is here to show you the tech side of origami. Plus, Kevin geeks out with hip hopper Bow Wow. You heard of it? And an extremely expensive, is an extremely expensive video card worth your money. From the G4 Tech TV Studios in San Francisco, it's the Screensavers. Screensavers, I'm Roger Chang. And I'm Kevin Rose. Thanks for joining us on the Screensavers. This is the place to find the latest hacks and tips, tech interviews, and the very best in computer health. Tonight we have a great show. Origami expert Robert Lang is here to show us some of his amazing creations. Plus, we'll tell you if the latest graphic card is worth the money. Very nice. And I sat down with recording artist Bow Wow to talk about gaming and file sharing. Big into the file sharing, Bow Wow. Too bad he's not such a great actor. I had no idea. Dude, how are you going to slam someone that's on our show today? I'm sorry. He's got posse, man. He's going to whoop upon you. That's like Snoop Dogg's cousin or something like that. All those uh, ankle biters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> what does that mean, even? Uh, anyway, all right, all right. Dan, what are you up to today? I'm taking your phone calls as usual. Here's the phone number. It's 888-989-7879. And you can also email us. Uh, it's a new e email address. So it's Take notes, g4techtv.com slash asktss. There you go. Excellent. Let's start off with today's tech topic is online dating. Yes. Yes. Something I'm sort of partially familiar with. Tell me about it. All right. When I was back on call for help when the show was still around, uh, I had to do a segment where we would find out whether or not I could get a date online. So they put me up with, uh, no, set me up with the match.com, you know, outlay and you know gave me the full uh, gold membership you know get all these uh, uh what does the gold membership entail what, what perks do you get for doing that uh essentially you can email right away with the person who mm -hmm. contacts you so if someone says hey i like you you want to talk email them right away you get access to their email address that they make public if you don't have it then you won't be able to you just only you won't you will only be able to look at uh, their profile but not be able to respond to so how'd it work out for you is this something you're a fan of you know i had no luck no luck. People I met were either kind of a little scary, um, or the people that, that did want to meet me, I found out later from someone else, were prostitutes. Really? Yes. <laughs> no, you, believe, On it match or, believe it or not, this is, <laughs> believe, believe, no, believe it or not, you know, so I found this out and I did some research and it, it's true. Did a they ask for money when you went out? No, 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 this is how it works. A lot of them actually flood these match, you know, match.com, you know, oh. the friendsters. And what happens is what they, they get really friendly with you and, you know, they solicit certain things in exchange, you know, for certain things. Did you try like the no, cyber sex I did not. or anything? Nothing. I, I kind of said, no, I rather spend my money elsewhere. Because back in the day, <laughs> I, I don't know about these things. We've seen so many commercials and things that are going on with online dating. It's, it's friendster has really taken off. Yes. One of our interns met his wife online that was, uh, that he dated for a while. Oh, look. <laughs> No, that's not our intern, but uh, it, it, uh, you know, I don't know about it. I tried it out once as well, and I had a bad experience. I mean, like, what, were you, what was your personal experience? Was it, I mean, did you actually meet someone? Well, I went out with this girl. We, 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 said, we said a mutual place to meet. It was right. a party, and uh, she had lied about how she looked in her profile, and it's like San Francisco, so you never know what you're going to get when you go out to dating here. And so, I, I don't know. I, it was weird. She followed me back to the house. She followed me in my she car. She followed you? It, was, she, you, a, you complain about me finding a prostitute, you picked up a stalker. <laughs> Dude, I think, I think a <laughs> prostitute's a little worse than a stalker. Hey, the stalker, you know, unless you get a court order, you know, they're going to be following you until the ends of the earth. <laughs> this is the screensavers. Let's stop talking about <laughs> prostitutes for a while. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so our whole thing about today is we wanted to talk about online dating and share our experiences. A, yes. We've both had terrible experiences. Terrible, terrible experiences. I don't think it's going to fly. You're better off going through the personals on the back of the uh, Sunday paper. I don't know. We have that one ad on, on G4 Tech TV where they say that it takes a whole like, profile about you. Uh, I haven't tried that one. I don't, well, I don't need to right now because I'm in a relationship. But, you know, you should give that a try. Sure, you know. I'll bring bring, <laughs> bring sure, it on. I'll, I'll, try it, I'll try it for the fifth time. And if there's any ladies watching right now, what's your home email address? My home email address is uh, rogerc at gmail.com. 
There you go. Good boy. Let's hook him up. I'm lucky I got six email addresses. <laughs> Thanks so much, Roger. <laughs> now Glenn joins us on the G4 Tech TV NetCam Network. Hey, Glenn, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Poplar Bluff, Missouri. All right. Do you ever try any online dating? No, I'm married. <laughs> uh, you can still do it on the side. Oh. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. I've never done that. And I would Personal never do experience, that. must No, no, no. <laughs> Dan does that kind of stuff with the interns. Oh. oh. Hey, guys, I love your show. You do great work. Well, thank you. Uh, I do have a question for you. Okay. I have my search toolbar, I search toolbar, my web search toolbar, right below where I enter the addresses on Internet Explorer. Mm -hmm. I know some of this is spyware. Yes. And I don't want it. How do I get rid of it? That is a great question because we've had this happen all the time. We get this question on a daily basis of people that call in. And with so many new, you know, companies and, you know, uh, people providing these kind of enhancements for your web browser, mm -hmm. a lot of people download things they otherwise shouldn't and end up with spyware, not knowing they have spyware until it's too late and they get weird emails all the time from people who want to give them low rate mortgages. Yeah. We actually went out and we downloaded and installed everything that uh, Dan had written down in the call this morning, like what it was. And take a look at it here. This is what the browser looks like. Uh, that's four browsers, that's four bars wow. deep. Look at that. We've got the yeah. Google bar, the iSearch. Does yours look like that? My web search, my uh, way search? Yes. Yeah, that can be a little <laughs> annoying. Uh, so, I mean, that's taking up like a third of our real estate right there on our web browser. That kind of sucks. So what do you use for spyware and adware removal? I actually use SpyBot Search and Destroy. So do I. One of my favorites. And uh, one of the great things about it is it not only does this, but it actually picks up on any other, th uh, any other software that might be construed as spy slash adware on your system. Oh, you mean like in real time? Is it run resident memory or are we talking No, no. Like what happens is you can actually, uh, what, you, what I do is once I download something, you know, I actually run through it and I can find out whether or not right away. If it is, you know, according to SpyBot Search and Destroy, it is spyware or adware, and I can take the appropriate action. But it'll also let me cover up any tracks I have. So any cookies that I might have a password, uh, bank account information, anything like that, it will also delete. So thereby ensuring that anything I have, uh, if, you know, I get a spyware or adware surreptitiously, it won't pull out anything important right away. Now, it's funny because I actually had, I don't know how they got on my machine, but I had a few of these installed on here not too long ago. And I ran uh, SpyBot Search and Destroy. It got rid of most of it. But I found that sometimes one uh, yeah. application isn't enough. So I turned to Adaware. Adaware is another one that has a great free uh, version that you can download from LavaSoft. Um, run that in conjunction with SpyBot Search and Destroy. And then there's another one. Robert Heron actually found one that he really liked as, as far as destroying uh, spyware and adware. What was the one that you sent out this morning? Those two you mentioned are the ones I recommend. It's okay. really the prevention tool from uh, Java Cool Software. And that's one I think you have loaded up there. Yeah, it's is called, it Spyware uh, Blaster? Spyware Blaster is awesome. Very cool. So that's three really that good. That prevents spyware in the first place and it protects Mozilla Firefox as well as IE. It's automatic, doesn't run in memory. Set it once and it's done. Excellent. Yoshi, do you have one of your favorites? or I use SpyBot Search and Destroy. Okay. You All know, right, cool. uh, Robert actually brought up a good point. You know, ever since I started using Firefox, I've actually had less issue with spyware and adware because a lot of them were created with IE in mind. So I actually just switched browsers and the incidents I had dropped by like three quarters. Mm -hmm. I, mean, know, that's those, good. That's, I mean, that's. I mean, just these were crafted for IE yeah, to be installed. Yeah, so you know, so. just by shifting to another yeah. browser, I limit my exposure to spyware on the web. Very cool. So we got a bunch of applications you can try out there. The cool thing is, all of those are free downloads. Yes. Uh, there you go. And if and you, you want to pay one, there is one that want, runs me, uh, in uh, memory. It's from McAfee. It's the anti-spyware. I've actually they have. never used it. I play with it. Is it's it pretty, pretty cool? Yeah. It actually detected some spyware as it was being installed. I liked it. It was. It's nice. But you do have to pay for that. These free ones are just as good. So. And you know the great thing about Spybot Search and Destroy is he's pretty regular with the updates. Yes. So you're always assured at least a week or two of something covered. Very cool. Thanks for the call, Glenn. And you get a TSS shirt. <laughs> nice throw, cameraman. Uh, see us at shirt just for being on the net cam. <laughs> the show's just getting started. You'll find out if it's time to invest in the latest graphics card. And after the break, see the technology behind the art of origami when the screen savers continue.
Chris has been studying origami, the art of folding paper into elaborate designs for over 30 years. With over 400 designs to his credit, he's recognized as one of the best in the world. Today we have him in our studio with software he wrote to help out outline origami projects. Let's welcome Dr. Robert Lang. Welcome to the Thank show. You. Thank you. Now, uh, before we get started, how did you get started in origami? When I was a kid, maybe about six years old, I got a book that had some instructions for a few origami figures in it. And something about that just hit me, that it was so wonderful. All you needed was a sheet of paper, and you could make this huge number of different shapes. And some of the wonder of that uh, concept has stuck with me for 30 years. Now, actually, what we have displayed out here is some examples of your work. And if you get on some of the details, this is, you know, this is pretty amazing. This isn't like the junior high origami I did where we made, like, you know, simple paper cranes or, you know, paper boxes. I mean, this is pretty elaborate stuff. If you look at all this uh, stuff, folks, you can see the amount of detail that each one of these brings, especially the uh, beetles and the spider. I mean, you know, it's, it's amazing. Now, I have to ask you, were these made with more than one sheet of paper? No, each of the figures here is made from a single uncut square of paper. So even this uh, fox right here was one sheet of paper? The fox is one sheet of paper. Even the insects, which have uh, 10 or 12 legs, horns, and other appendages, everything is from one sheet of paper, only folding. Only, so you'd even tear? No, no tears, no cuts, no cheating? We try really hard not to tear the paper. That's, uh, uh, tearing it is a mistake. So none of this has intentional tearing or unintentional tearing. So if I were to take one of these, heaven forbid, and unwrap it, it would come back out into a single sheet of paper? It would come back to a single square. Wow, now do you use any tools? Uh, do you like wet? wet these things a little bit in order to bend them? That's right. To make the uh, natural shapes, the rounded shape, I'll dampen the paper as I fold it, to, and that's what gives the rounded shape of the beetle or the curvedness of the horns. Now, how, how much time do you normally take to make one of these? Well, there's two parts to making it. There's the design, and then there's the folding, once I've come up with the design. Designing itself can, if I'm lucky, it'll go quickly, just a couple hours. If I'm not very lucky, it takes weeks and weeks to design it. But once I've worked out a design to fold the thing up is usually anywhere from about two hours to maybe a day of total folding. Okay, now I understand you actually created some software to help you facilitate uh, some of the designs. Can you, uh, TreeMake, I believe, is one of them, and that actually lets you create a design and tells you where you can fold? That's right. For the past 10 or 15 years, people have developed kind of mathematical ways of designing a shape based on how many flaps it has, how many appendages. And so TreeMaker lets me draw a stick figure, which is called the, the tree of the shape that I want to make. This is a stick figure of a spider. If you were to count each of these dark blue lines, each one represents a leg of the spider. And then there's another uh, flap here for the head and the abdomen. And then TreeMaker, once you've defined a shape, I can tell it to build a crease pattern, and it will construct the creases that need to fold wow, up look into at that. that shape. Now, I, I understand you actually have one of these sheets that you pre-folded. That's right. So the crease pattern that shows here on the screen is folds up into this shape, which is a base for a spider. Now, that doesn't look a lot like no, a spider. It looks, looks kind of like uh, one of those construction projects I did in grade school. That's right. But it has all the parts you need to make a spider. Each of these corners is a flap that can be turned into a leg. You just make it skinny by folding it from side to side, and then do a little bit of shaping. And when you've done, that ex same shape folds into so, this spider. So this green sheet of paper becomes this spider. Right. That is amazing. I can barely make a paper airplane, let alone one of these. And this, but this spider takes about, uh, oh, probably about four hours of folding. Four hours. Amazing. Now, you also had something else called Reference Finder. What does that let you do? That's right. What Reference Finder does is figure out how to make, how to put these creases in the right place. Now, you can, uh, TreeMaker will tell me the coordinates of any point in the crease pattern, but how can you do that just by folding? Reference Finder lets me type in the coordinates of a point and so if I put in like a point a third of the way up, type those in, and it gives English language instructions for how to fold. Things like fold the left edge to the right edge, fold the top corner down to that line, so forth. So and in about four or five folds, it can locate any point or line in a square. Now, how elaborate can you make one of these origami uh, designs using the software? I mean, it, is it, can you make a full life-sized origami sculpture? The software will design origami 
for any size, just depends on what size sheet of paper you start with. So the software, you could, you could design a figure like this, this dancer, and, and uh, then this can be folded life size. And in fact, I have folded this figure six feet tall. You made a six foot version of this? Yep, took a sheet of paper that was about four meters on a side, but uh, it can be done and it's pretty much the same figure, only now, larger. Now I also understand that you actually helped out uh, Lawrence Livermore Labs uh, create uh, a folding telescope lens. That's right. Livermore had a design for a telescope that was going to go up into space and they needed, the, the shape has to be, the telescope had to be packed into a rocket and a rocket ship is, is round. So they needed a way of folding a large flat shape up in which it would go into a rocket and then deploy into a large flat lens. And I came up with a couple different structures and this is one of them. This is the one they actually picked that when it unfolds, it gives a large wow. lens and they've actually built now a five meter version of now, this. How do you fold the lens out. without breaking it? Well, the lens is made of individual panels and there are hinges along all of the creases of the panels. And so the hinges are what actually do the bending. Wouldn't that like add a defect to the lens marring the image that they take? No, it, as it turns out, it doesn't. One of the reasons for going to a folded structure was by precisely controlling the locations of the hinges. And um, the uh, glass part of the surface has no defects or deformation. And so it can still produce a very high resolution image, even with these lines running through it. Wow, that is truly amazing. Thanks a lot, Robert. I hope to see a lot more of your work in the future. And you know, it's gotten me inspired. I might go home and try it myself. If you can't get enough of origami, there's more to see and learn at langorigami.com or at the screensavers.com. There's more info in the show notes, so check them out. Still to come, do you have, a, have to spend a fortune on graphics cards to play the game like Far Cry and Battlefield Vietnam? Find out later. And up next, find out how to make some cash by selling your domain when the screensavers continues. How you doing, Jeff? Good, how are you? Fine. I hear you have a question. Yeah, I'd like to know how to remote administer my computer from outside my network. I got XP Home, so I know I can't use Windows Remote Admin Tool, but I was wondering what third-party programs you guys recommend. Nice. Yeah, though that's the problem with Windows XP Home is that we, I always use Remote Desktop that's yeah. built into XP Pro, but you can't download it, you can't install it. No. That is a feature of XP Pro. Pro and the only, Unfortunately, you know, there is no other Windows-like application you can get from Microsoft that allows you to do it for free. Right. So what do we have? Well, what I like, believe it or not, is something called VNC, or Virtual uh, Networking Client, and it enables you to do a lot of the same kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I, there are many different iterations, and I know you have a particular favorite. Yeah, I like uh, Tight VNC. Uh, it's available at tightvnc.com. Jeff, have you heard of VNC before? Yeah, I've used it. It works good, but I can't get it to work outside my network. Oh, really? Well, you might have some, are you behind like a little firewall or a little router or something? Yeah, I got a Linksys. Yeah, uh, that's the problem. You need to open up the specific ports. Have you done the research and find out which ports you need to open in order to let that traffic through? No. That's, yeah, that's most likely your problem. Uh, there's, there's certain ports, it's non-standard ports, it doesn't use like, actually there is a, uh, a Java-based one that'll work over a standard web browser, but uh, it is still, I, I'll have to do the research and find out exactly which ports you have to open up. But uh, it's on the website here. It's under the support somewhere in here. They'll tell you exactly which ports you open up, and then uh, you'll be good to go. This is a great service. There's some other ones that offer a little more functionality that are pay. Yeah, go to my PC. Go to my it's PC. one that comes to mind. It's because we actually used to use it on Call for Help a lot. What do you think? It was great. You know, I, I was, when they first pitched it to us, the company, I was kind of skeptical. I was like, yeah, right, you guys just want us to hawk another product on air. Right. But I used it, and I was actually quite surprised at how flexible and how quick it ran. I mean, for most people, they need some sort of beefy system or some high-speed connection, but right. it, it went r relatively well considering it was on a dial-up connection with, a, with a, a user on the other end. It worked okay. Most people can use it. Uh, it's not a, you know, a storage hog only. The, the download's, what, under a hundred, around 200K? Yeah, that's cool. And the one thing I liked about it so much is the fact that uh, you can do it from anywhere. So if you're at a, a little internet cafe, you just have to open up a web browser 
and then you can it's, access it. And you don't have to remember your IP address. That's no, a big it's, plus. It's great. It's a very kind of turnkey solution. It's great for people, especially people with uh, parents and stuff that need to admin their machines, but they mm -hmm. live on the other side of the country. Totally. Say, hey, mom, turn on the computer. I'll connect and I'll work it out for you. Great solution. Very cool. Also, PC Anywhere, another one you have to pay for, but it's a one-time payment rather than a monthly yep. fee. Thanks for the call, Jeff. Hopefully that will help you out. There's a lot happening with our show since the Comcast G4 Tech TV merger. So if you're confused and just want to know what we're doing for our future shows, check our schedule. So what you do from uh, the screensavers.com, go to the uh, under the show nav section, just click schedule. Then you find the desired show that you want and then tells you all about it. Not bad, huh? So don't go anywhere. Hear what games hip hop artist Bow Wow is playing. Which portable MP3 player is his favorite? That's kind of later. But after the break, how much bang for your buck do you get by spending an extra $300 for a video card? Now you're going to find out when the screen savers continue. Screensavers, I'm Kevin Rose. Coming up in this half hour, find out what games recording artist Bow Wow has been playing, and of course, more of your live calls. But now, here on the Screensavers, we talk about video cards a lot. That's because we love gaming, and you need to have a fast card to get the best possible experience. Now, a good card can range from $200 to $600, but is it worth dropping that much extra cash? Well, here to explain it all is G G4 Tech TV lab analyst Robert Heron. Hey, Robert. Hey, how are you? Welcome back to the show again. Thank you. <clears throat> now, there is nobody. I, you are the geek when it comes to video cards. We all turn I like to you. Gaming. Uh, what, what, what do you have for <laughs> I have us here for a today? Long time. We have a couple of video cards to show off the difference between a, a lower end or a more value oriented card compared mm -hmm. to top of the line. Okay. And we can jump right to what we have on the screens up here in Let's front of us. And that's probably the best example we can start with. On the left hand side, we have a $200 GeForce FX 5700 Ultra. Pretty decent video card. It came out about a year ago. And mm -hmm. on the right, we have. Rather expensive, if you can even find it right now. But this is the X800 XT. Actually, this is the Platinum Edition. That's which the is fastest the one. This is the fastest, fastest one right here. You can't even really buy it right now. I mean, you can see the difference in frame rate. Look how about much this one's flying compared. About a $400 dollar difference between those cards, and wow. it gives you about, at this resolution, both cards are configured identically in mm -hmm. terms of the settings in game, and we have the to resolution, and everything. Yeah, and we have to say the, the, uh, the four actual... Four times difference in performance. Four times. Yeah. That's fast. We have to say the, the game systems themselves are exactly the same. Same processor, same RAM. Same CPU. Everything. Yeah, everything. Wow. So you've cranked up every, every possible setting in Far Cry. Max quality. And what were the frame rates again for the fast one it was at 12 by 10 we're getting about 62 frames per uh -huh. second with the x800 we're getting about 17 frames Ooh. per second with the 5700 ultra now the, with, you know, those you, are different cards right. so but just to show you what the difference is really i was gonna say you can turn down the settings a little bit though to you know you don't have to have the water looking like that do we have can you give sacrifice me a your eye candy to get yeah. frame rates give me a comparison <laughs> of uh, let's say we wanted to get the same frame rate what are we going to have to sacrifice what are we looking at just to tell you right off the bat you will never be able to achieve the frame rates that the x800 can that card is Two, three, four, five times faster just than even any, if I turn any off of the lesser cards. That even came if I do before. wireframe mode, maybe. I'm, not <laughs> I'm just go kidding. There. I don't even know if they have just that. Just to though. show you, the, <laughs> to give you a good idea of what you physically will see in a game. Right. Let's just take a look at some screenshots okay. here, real quick. I've put together. Here, I took a screen cap from the game using two different cards at similar resolutions, mm -hmm. and to get a playable frame rate in the game, this is one of the things you're going to see when you start dialing down the detail settings in a, in a lower end card. For this, it might be a little hard to see, but the big difference in this shot is, is the water. The water. Yeah. You're getting more detailed reflections compared to the other side. It's hard it, to see on TV, but we can really see it here. I a mean, little, there's a definite difference. There's also a little increase in the texture detail of this mm -hmm. tree or whatever that plant growth is. That's a little hard to see. Let's jump to something else here. Here's a lighting issue that you'll come across when you start deal, dialing down the settings on NVIDIA's card. <clears throat> This banded lighting that you'll see on this side right here uh -huh. is not right. It's, it should look a little bit like this when the flashlights shined at the barrels. Okay. You get a little more realistic reflections. The banding in there is from partial precision errors that are introduced. And there's also some water, which we'll get to in this next shot. But there's another example where when you dial down the settings, boom, you're not getting gotcha. the image quality that the developers intended you to see. Okay. Here's a little bit the same similar situation with the river scene. Yeah, it's hard to see in this picture here, but the X800, you can actually kind of see into the river, and you see the reflections a lot better. And on the left-hand yeah. side, you just see kind of like a blob of white a there. A general sky reflection. Also, right. the boat detail, the lighting of the boat. This is actually a reflection of the sky up here. This is not quite as how it should look compared to mm -hmm. the side over here. Also, there. Cool. 
Last one, this is probably the grand data. It really shows off the difference, the raft floating in the river. When you have a high-end card and you can turn everything up and still maintain good frame rates, you're getting beautiful it reflections, like, like the boat itself in the water, yeah, I was gonna say, which it looks is like missing right here. The raft is floating in air rather than, you can see the reflections on the right-hand side of the boat. You know, it's going to look beautiful either way, but it's just the level of detail, especially with the lighting you can see right here compared to the ends of the pontoons. Right. It's just everything gets cranked up another notch, and you're still maintaining good frame rates. Mm -hmm. You have to start turning down details in order to get good frame rates with the latest games like Far Cry. Far Cry is that is the granddaddy right now of all first-person shooters. It has the best graphics quality, but it requires incredible hardware to really pull that off gotcha. in, a, in a realistic way. So now is, let's talk about who's going to buy these cards. Let's say that your average consumer at home is running a, right around a 2 gigahertz processor. Okay. What should they buy? Start with the CPU. For, okay. for today, if you're looking at games like Far Cry, where do we need to be? Doom 3, Half-Life 2, 3 gigahertz is really where it's starting to get to the point where you can pretty much put any video card you want and you're going to get good performance out okay. of that. If you start pairing a $500 graphics card with a 2 gigahertz processor or that 2 gigahertz class processor, you're you're sacrificing you're you're basically limiting the performance of the video card. Suddenly mm -hmm. the bottleneck goes back to the CPU. I see. Okay, so right More around CPU the 3 the gigahertz range. And besides gaming, everything improves when you drop in a faster processor. So all your applications, the whole system will feel faster and it's a lot less expensive to buy a a fast processor, well, there are processors that cost more than some right. video cards, but right. for about 400 bucks, you can get a very, very fast processor or a little bit less. So, okay, tell me about, we have two cards here. What, okay. what if somebody is, you know, has a tight budget? They want to spend $200, $300, and $400. What would you recommend for those price ranges and the cards that go along with them? I still like the 9600 XT from ATI as okay. a value card. You can get it for under $150. They have a 256 meg model. That is good to pair with a relatively fast CPU. Like say if you can't, you have like maybe a 2.8 or something or mm -hmm. 2.4. Those are, that's a good match right there. Cause it's like, that's roughly about $150 CPU with about $150 video card. We already know what the high end one's gonna yeah. be. How about the middle of the road? Do you recommend buying middle of the road or? See, it's tough. I, I'd say if you are CPU limited, you, you say you're in that two gigahertz range and you really should be up in the three, three and a half range for high end gaming. That's probably where you want to focus your money first, is get a better CPU now. Stick, right. stick with the video card you have and save your money. So you're saying high-end or low-end, don't, don't waste your money in it's the middle hard, of the road. Yeah, it's hard to pick a middle-of-the-road card. You're going to, although the Pro model, which is actually that tell ATI card there. Tell me about this real quick. We only, we're running yeah. out of time, but tell me about the Pro. There's a way to overclock this or there's a way to... Some people are running into situations where you can flash the BIOS on that and enable. That is, has four fewer pipelines than the high-end uh, XT series. So... With a little modification, you can, in some cases, actually enable those four pipelines, essentially making it the nice. same as the $600 part. It's about 50-50. If you look around on the web, you'll find people with success stories and people who failed. Are they it. killing the cards that they fail, or are they still work? Uh, you know, hopefully Ooh. you can. It sounds like you can undo it, but that's a risky thing. Yeah. So, you know. Excellent. Well, we have some good cards that you laid out for us today. Thanks, Robert. Oh, my pleasure. Appreciate it. For the latest prices on video cards, you can check out one of our favorite websites, which is PriceWatch.com. Now, there you are, our next caller of Dallas has a broken router. Can we fix it? Find out in just a bit. But up next, Hip Hop Junkie Bow Wow gets his game off, and the screensavers come back. <laughs> Dallas joins us on the phone from Greenville, Texas. Hey, Dallas. Hey, hey how's it going? How's it going? I love this show. This has got to be my favorite show. Well, thank you. Cool. All right. You have a question for us? Yes. I was uh, I only, in my room. I only have one network cable. Sure. I share it between my PlayStation 2 and my laptop. Oh. Okay. So say that one more time. Roger was being mean and rushing you into the question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I, I only have one network cable in my room. Okay. And I share it between my laptop and my PlayStation. Okay. I removed it from my laptop earlier so that I was going to play some SOCOM with some friends. Fair enough. And it shocked me. It wasn't like a really big shock. Your but, laptop you know, it, did? Yeah. No, no, not the laptop, but the network cable did. Oh, the yeah. network cable did? Yeah. Hmm. So I plugged That's it into my bad. PlayStation, and I logged in, and it didn't work. And so I put, it, I put it back in the laptop, and it didn't work. And what I, had to do, I ended up having to do, I had to switch around cords and stuff in my, uh, my router. It's a Linksys router. And after switching it around and stuff, I found out that two of the ports are, I think, are burnt out. They've shorted or something from that shock. Although one of them still works, so my internet still works now. I was just wondering if the burnout could, have poss could be possible. Wow. I've never heard of anybody getting shocked by a Linksys router before. Yes, it shocks me. It's been the third time. Did you really? Just, <laughs> did, did you just... 
Wow. Oh, maybe you need a new router. Did you just touch it? <laughs> I mean, just like just like put your hand on it and it shocked you? I reach back and I unplug it, and then like if my my thumb or something will graze the uh, plug itself, and then I'll get shocked. What type of shock are we talking? Are we talking like puts you out for a good ten minutes? Or are we talking just? A, it's a, like when you stand a, when you electrocute someone with your finger. A static oh, shock. Static. Yeah. You know, when, you, when you shuffle your feet. That's not too carpet. bad. That's not too bad. But it can't damage uh, electronic components, especially yes. with computer equipment, yeah. because they're very, very sensitive to that. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. Um, yeah, your best now, bet is to take that thing back. Do you still have the receipt from your old Best Buy or wherever you got it? I doubt it. Yeah, uh, I would call Linksys. I mean, this is a liability. I mean, if, if something has gone wrong with the router where it's shocking people. I mean, if it's if there's a f manufacturing defect, I mean, you know, causing you injury, that's that's something you can actually call them on and tell them, hey, look, you know, you, you injured me, could have caused a life-threatening uh, yeah. have you talked condition. To an, <laughs> have you talked to an attorney yet? No, I haven't. You know, Linksys is owned by Cisco. I'll get right on that. Yeah. Um, but to, more to something you can do right yes. now. Yeah, I mean... Computer components go bad. Stuff yeah, like this does happen. And unfortunately, you know, unless you're willing to spend a lot of time and elbow grease prying this open and, you know, testing it, you know, thoroughly, it's right. probably better just to see if you can borrow one from a friend if they have a, you know, a router they can, you can borrow for well, a day or so. I found a port that works. So oh, you I did. I but two of the ports don't work at all. Right. No matter what I do. Well, you got to, it's, it's time to exchange this thing and take it back for sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, I would just go buy another one. Throw this one in the box, take it back, and say it was busted when you got it. Yeah. Is that legal to do that kind of stuff? How long have, that, how long have you had it right. since you bought it? Uh, he's, he's, we lost him. Uh, well, you know, I would call Linksys first thing, explain what the problem is. If you send it to them, they'll probably just, just send you a new just one. Just tell them it's a manufacturing a defect company. and it blew up on you. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Dallas. <laughs> Dallas went down, we took him out. A couple weeks ago, I had a chance to chat with hip hop artist, actor, and avid gamer Bow Wow. Let's take a look. He's been rapping since the age of five. At six years old, he was Snoop Dogg's opening act on his Chronic Tour. Now in his teens, he's a multi-platinum recording artist with his new album, Unleashed, released in 2003. And to top it off, he's a gamer. He joins us now via satellite from Atlanta, Georgia. Bow Wow, welcome to the show. So I hear it's hard to get you, you know, into the studio. You're playing so many video games. Is that true? Yeah, definitely, man. I'm a video fanatic. Video games, I love them. What's, what's your favorite game you're playing right now? Uh, right now, man, I mean, I'm still playing like NBA Live, you mm -hmm. know, uh, all the new games out, man, I got them, I'm playing them already. I'm, I'm, I'm a big boxing fan, so I've been playing Fight Nights 2004, so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely been playing a lot of videos. I'm video gamed out, man. Do you, do you hook up online or are you just doing it like with your, your buddies that come over? Oh, man, I do it all, man, online, offline, you let me know where it's at, I'm there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what about the consoles? Are you talking, uh, you like the PS2, Xbox better? I'm a big, uh, I'm a big Xbox man. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the graphics are incredible, especially for, especially for sports games. Uh, I just love the whole thing about the Xbox man. It seems more powerful. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, on the computer side of things? You ever play any PC games or anything like that? You, you know what, man? No, I, I, ha I haven't really. I'm, I'm not that nice with the, with the whole mouse and <laughs> all the. I, I get lost. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I just keep a joystick, man. H have you ever gone online? I, I mean, I went online. I was looking. I was doing a little research for the interview, and I saw, like, there's all these fan sites. You got all these girls, like, sending you messages on the forums. You ever check any of that stuff out? Yeah, it's crazy, especially, like, when you play EA Sports. You know, you already have, like, your own account. So, yeah, uh, yeah I always get on there and message boards. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's bananas. It's like a, another world. It's almost like the Matrix. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. You got a pretty sweet website, too. It's like all this flash going on and like completely interactive website. I saw that you actually have video clips on there that you did. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty sweet. Now, how about the whole iTunes things? I, I went on iTunes and I saw that you have some of your albums for sale. There's been a lot of controversy about people stealing music online. Right. Are, you, are you worried about that? Do you really care if people trade your songs? Oh, yeah, I care. I mean, I'm sure a lot of artists would care. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's affecting record sales. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you may have somebody who sold, uh, let's say, a million records the first time and they came back and sold uh, 500,000, which is still good. I mean, it's gold. But, I um, mean, like, what happened to the other 500,000? Well, the other 500,000 could have downloaded your song, your CD. Yeah. So, which, which, which kills record sales, man. I mean, it just, all it does is just makes the, uh, the industry go down and, uh, you know, it just kind of hurts the artists in a, in, a, in a way, man. Yeah, what do you think about, uh, like, the iPods and things like that? Do you have your own little iPod or...? Oh, yeah, I have my own iPod. Yeah, I have the iPod and the regular iPod, and I have the iPod Mini. 
Oh, nice. So, uh, oh, so yeah, so I, we got all the electronics, man. We, we, we good with the electronics, man. Please believe it. Thanks, Bow Wow. You can read more about Bow Wow at his website, bowwowunleashed.com. The cool thing is, like, I, I had a chance to talk to him a few minutes before the interview because, okay. you know, they always yeah. went up the satellite. And he was a really nice guy. He was really into gaming. He was super cool. It was, was kind of cool to get a chance to meet him. Wasn't he known as Little Bow Wow? Yeah, they changed that. He's not Little anymore. He's right. just Bow Wow. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, I'm no, just asking because I remember him from that movie at Like Mike. Was it good? I didn't see no. it. <laughs> Head on over to screensavers.com and you can find out how you can play online with Bow Wow. Now, finding deals online for PC components and consumer electronics couldn't be any easier. There's a bunch of bargain sites out there that aggregate good deals on the net and put it on, put on one easy-to-read website. Now, the two websites that we recommend, the first one is gotapex.com, and the second one is bensbargains.net. Now, both do a great job at saving some cash. There's even a forum section to talk about all the deals that are going on. That it's yeah. So, anyways, coming up after the break, Remove some spyware, and you, now you can't get online. Leo's got the fix. And tell Howard how he can cash in on his domain name. It's coming up after these messages. <laughs> Howard joins us on the phone from Brooklyn, New York. Hey, Howard. Hey, hey Kevin. Hey, Raj. Hey. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Uh, just great. Just great. I am wondering about how to sell a domain name for a decent amount of cash. Look, looking to make some <laughs> cash, huh? Oh, yeah. You need a new car? Need a new computer? What's, what's, give us a little background here. I would like um, definitely a new computer and a high-definition TV. Wow. Oh, I hear you yeah, there. I'd like the same thing. I want a oh, high-def yeah. TV. I want a, I want a lot of cash. So you're looking for a website. Uh, do you have multiple domains? Do you have one domain? I have one domain. Just one domain. Interesting. When did you When did you buy this domain? About 13 months ago. Mm -hmm. 13 months. Mm. All right. Yeah. Well, we can show you a couple sites for selling domains. Uh, right. One that I've used in the past is called afternick.com. I, I didn't actually sell through here, but I, I purchased a, a domain through here. I had to buy kevinrose.com. You had to buy it? I kid you not, $1,500. Was this, this person also named yeah, Kevin? Yeah, they were also okay. named Kevin Rose, and, but they weren't doing anything with it. And I was like, how much do you want for it? And he's like, three grand. Three I was like, grand. no way, I'm not paying you three grand. Shoot, so. I would legally change my name first before, <laughs> before I pay that out. <laughs> I talked him down to 1500 I bought it back you know, as we're going to the dot-coms and making a ton of cash. I didn't care. I was just throwing my own money. But do you have, have RogerChang.com? No, I don't. I believe, uh, actually, let me see. I think it belongs to a Canadian fellow who actually has a website um, with his resident. I would think he would have RogerChang.com. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, you know, so would I, but, you know, I never got around to it. Oh, you know what? I guess he's not in business anymore. You should grab it. Someone's going to grab it the second they see this. You better grab it quick. <laughs> if it's up for sale. Anyway, to get back to your, to your question, uh, the website is afternick.com. And uh, it's, it's a great little website. You can go in there and you, it shows you what, uh, you'll get a good idea of what domains sell for. There's a lot of really crappy domains out there that people think they can get like, you know, $40,000, $50,000 for, but in actuality, they can only get, you know, $50,000, so $75 for. This will give for. you kind of a realistic yes. picture of what you'll actually get. Definitely. And they actually appraise domain names there as well. Ooh, that's and, good. And uh, they have some, some uh, I like their appraisals because it's not, something you know crazy and outrageous they give you real world appraisals saying you know for like it's like five or ten bucks to appraise something and they'll tell you what you're really going to be able to sell it for and you can see domains range from under a hundred dollars up to several thousand like asking 39 well that's cellular.jp cellular.jp is going for 40 grand right now i don't know if they're going to get that wow so Man, i could put a i could put a down payment on a home for that they just told us two cows owns rogerchang.com uh -oh. Two cows? Not yeah. good. What are they going to do with it? Well, they're a registrar, too, so it could be that they just... Yeah, uh, it probably is. Someone registered it through two cows. All right, so, thanks for the call, Howard. Yeah, Howard, check out that website, though. It's some good, uh, good resource for you. Now, here's Leo with a troubleshooting tip. Spyware! I hate it! I hate the stuff! It's bad, it's icky, it's awful. Viruses, too. There's one problem, though. If you run, sometimes, if you run a spyware... Uh, checker and it removes the spyware or an antivirus program and it removes a virus, you can be left with a system that's less than fully functional. Most commonly, you are left with a system you can't get online with. Well, wh what good is that? 
Well, Microsoft has a fix. Sure they do. How to determine and recover from WinSock 2 corruption. This is TechNote 811259. And why? It's just a few little minor registry hacks, about 24 different steps and things you got to do. All right, forget it. I'm not doing that. How about an easier way? Yes, I found one. Thanks to the folks at spychecker.com. This is WinSock XP Fix. And what he does is basically wrote a little Visual Basic program that does all those registry mods. Now, of course, as with any registry mod, you want to back up your non-functioning registry just in case. Uh, however, I think you're going to find that in many cases, this fixes the problem. It couldn't be easier to use. You just double click WinSock XP Fix and you press the Fix button. I would read the About box first. That's kind of the manual. Uh, it, it, particularly when you're using Windows 95, 98, or ME, there are some things you need to do uh, first. But let's just, let's, just, let's just run it. What do you say? On a perfectly well-working machine. What, what's, I wonder what's going to happen now. Yeah, let's fix it. <laughs> oh, boy. I hope Kevin doesn't kill me later. If you're having trouble getting online after killing spyware or viruses, get a friend to download this for you. Winsock XP Fix from spychecker.com. There are a lot of other great utilities, too, for fighting spyware in there. Spychecker.com. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Oh. Whoa, he's getting mad. Wow. T-shirts at us. Thank you, Leo. Uh, we have a bunch of emails coming up right after the yeah. break. Like, how, when is DDR2 coming to the motherboard? We're going to answer coming? that. When is it coming? And much more when the screensavers continue. Time to read some final emails. You want to start a shot? Sure. Start. I'll start off. I have one from Lisa here. There's been DDR2 for graphics cards for a long time, but not yet for the PC. When are we going to start seeing it in motherboards? We're going to have to throw this one over to Robert Heron. You, you know, w w tell us about DDR2 in the motherboards. Uh, DDR2 is actually available right now from several manufacturers. It is what Intel is using in their latest chipsets for their new motherboards, the previously codenamed Grantsdale and Alderwood. DDR2 is alive and well. It's not available yet for AMD-based systems. It's not just a big deal. Compared to DDR that we know and love right now, the 400 megahertz and above, there is really no performance gain mm -hmm. to go to DDR2 right now because of uh, DDR2 currently has increased latencies, how fast the memory can respond to mm -hmm. timing calls and things like that. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to see that in AMD-based motherboards? Anytime soon? I, I'll bet you by the end of the year. Okay. Probably like November, September, November. Very Pretty cool. quick. I think with the new NVIDIA chipset, you're going to see some, maybe some DDR2 action there. Excellent. Mm. I'll have to save up some money for that. Yes, indeed. All right. Uh, this email uh, wants to know, description, uh, he has a power supply, and he wants to get a new computer. What kind of power supply should he use for a for gaming PC. PC? Interesting. I love power supplies from PC Power and Cooling. Let's just do a quick survey. What do you, what's your favorite power supply? I actually use Antec because, it's a, it's, for me, it's a good comprise between performance and price. Robert, Yoshi? Name brand. Buy a name brand power supply from a reputable vendor. Don't buy a no name brand yeah. power supply. Definitely uh, name brand. PC Power Cooling is one I like as well. The 510 Deluxe actually is the model I like. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Don't we have a new change. email. This just in. <laughs> RogerChang.com is the one from Roger Chang. He's in Canada. I told you a Canadian took it. <laughs> What's wrong with that? No, I'm not blaming him. I'm just saying he took it. Looks like it's up for sale too. $20,000. <laughs> Are you going to buy it? I need to buy the car first. There we go. What else do we got? Any other quick uh, questions? I'm building a website for my sister's business. That's very nice. From David. I was wondering where I can find nice free clip art. Hmm. Uh, clip, clip art. art. Other websites. <laughs> <laughs> Save That's ass. actually. <laughs> clip art does not look so good on websites. No, you know, I don't know if we want to recommend it. Clip art doesn't good. look good in Word documents. It's not going to look good on a, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> on a website. That is it for this edition of the Screensavers. I'm Kevin Rose. And I'm Roger Chang. Thanks for joining us. We'd like to thank our guests, Robert Lang and Robert Heron. See you next All time. All Roberts. Yes, and have a great <laughs> night. Good night.